Hello there, it's Fiona from Weekly Sewing Bee. Now we've got a very easy make today and we're going to make a string bag. Now, what I've got here is I've got a strip of fabric and this is a full ream wise, so this is 60 centimetres and it is 35 inches wide. So I've given myself loads of hem allowance. I have just a spare bit of material, completely optional for... Um, just a little pocket fun marker thing and I also off this strip have cut a little strip now there are two ways to do these string bags you can either use the rivets uh, or you can just put a little toggle in so I'm going to go for the toggle easy answer and all I'm going to do is fold this over sew this turn it inside out and then uh, do a top line stitch or you could, depending on the material, if you're going for a nice, a nice amenable sort of cotton or something, you can fold both sides in and then sew it. Now it really does depend on the cloth. Um, not to be said for ironing this first to do it. Or lots of pins, but you can see it can be done. So. I'll use that for one side and you can see that that's a lot quicker because the other one we're going to do we're going to fold it in half do a line of stitches I'm not going to sew right up to the end because it um, makes it easier to turn inside out if I do that and then we're going to pull it through. So yes, it does depend on the cloth. So I need these done before I do the main body of the bag because I want to sew these in. Um, the other thing that I want to do is I want to line the pocket because it's easier to sew any decorations on before we actually sew the bag together. So I can come back to that, but you can see I've made a start and then pretty much just a line of top stitching and all sorts of tools to help you there. We could use a knitting needle or something else. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to leave this as a pocket. I was just going to sew it on as a patch, but I think it will work well as a pocket and it is just a spare piece of fabric um, because I wanted to show you this bit. So, uh, yeah. so we have to work out where the front is going to be because we want to centre this in the middle and um, a little bit up and down will be fine but not too much. Now we're going to need to turn over quite a large hem allowance so that we've got one layer of string here and one layer of string here. So we can then work out where we would like this. So now we've done that and we've got it straight. Now I thoroughly recommend that you hold it in position with a pin so that it stays where it, will, it should be because it's very easy when you're doing this sort of top stitch, decoration stitch, is um, just to twist it slightly. So let's get this in position and if your sewing machine has zigzag stitches we need to turn it to the zigzag stitch and put the smallest length on so this works as a so we can literally stamp it on now the other trick to do if your sewing machine has a buttonhole stitch stitch it to the buttonhole strength lengthen the stitch to the smallest that it can handle and then we've also got this lovely stitch so and then it's just a matter of convincing the machine to sew now it's quite time consuming because obviously we're just using little stitches and you can see there that it didn't like going over the reverse stitch it really didn't. Now if you find that these stitches are too small and you do have the option to go for that one then it is probably best to use a really small zigzag stitch. 
and we can go over this twice. So you can see it's going and you can see even though it's pinned lightly there that it is pushing the fabric so we will have to keep an eye on that. Okay so I'm going to use uh, um, the needle down to turn it and I'm just going to line it up so one stitch is on just the fabric and one stitch is on the thing that we're going to sew on. Alright so I've got a little bit of sewing to do and I'll be right back with you. Hello there, so welcome back. As you can see, I've now got my picture centred in the uh, middle of the bag and I've remembered to line it up so that I've got my quite large hemming allowance at the top and I've also got my tag at the bottom to thread my string through. Okay, next step. So, making sure the bag is inside out, all I want to do is hem possibly four inches yeah it's quite a large amount because you need two channels for both strings to go through and then you need to fold it over so fold it over once a line of stitches it just makes the finished bag look so much better okay and we're going to sew those in so it's not too much and then I'm going to do the same and I'm making sure that I'm actually folding this in to on the wrong side. So one little fold, probably through half an inch. That's all it needs. Okay, so let's re-thread the machine. Now yes, I know, I suppose I could include a little bit of housekeeping in this. Um, sometimes when I'm sewing with one type of thread, you'll see me and I'll pull it from there. It's only because the thread is so strong that it will actually bend needles. So it's a bit of a pain, this thread. And I know not to buy the brand. And yes, I could just use it as bobbin thread. Um, but every now and again, I'll pick it up and it, it looks so similar. But Okay, so that's done. I could mark it with a pin just to make sure that I've got it exactly the right amount. So, okay, next step. I'm going to turn the bag right side out. There we go. And I am going to sew with the bag right side out so that I've got my stitches in a French seam afterwards. I'm going to place my tag where it would be, okay? So I'm going to sew over that and a line of stitches just to the top. Make sure I line up those, tuck them in, keep everything neat. And then I'm going to turn it inside out and this tag what I need to do is I need to line it up quite neatly in my fingers so that it goes straight and it doesn't get caught up can we see this the outside there and then I sew straight across it so it's just important to to make sure it's not tucked up in any way Okay, so straight over the tag, and here we go, sealing in the seam. Now, I can feel the difference between these two underneath my thumb and forefinger. And what I don't want is any scraggly bits sticking out, so... And, to be honest with you, I've given myself that much fabric in the hem around, so it's fine. It's fine. Alrighty. Couple of double stitches just to keep it nice. Now I find this next one quite difficult. 
you know, not impossible or anything. What we need to do is we need to fold over this and we then need to hem it and then fold it over so that we've got enough room for our channel. Now I do find that quite difficult so if you want to just do a single line of stitches over a single hem and then fold it that's fine. If not then we're going to have to revert to pins so let's make sure that both these sides come down as equal and we can do that with just a pair of scissors because I am um, Then what we need to do is the first line of stitches, we need to go around like that. So that's grabbed. Alright. And another thing that's quite important, this back bit we need to keep out of the way so always good to consider and then we literally sew. Now another thing is the cord. Depending on how good you are at threading we can actually place this under now and then we've got that done. But it is really up to you, it just depends how, how happy you are. This line's quite easy, but then, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do my line of stitches. I'm going to do one here, and then I'm going to do one there. Okay. So, I'm just helping the machine through that first bit, because that's quite tricky, it's uh, a good few layers, checking that it's all lined up and with my right hand I'm literally pushing the other fabric out of the way. Okay and you can see it's all roughed up here. There we go, just going over the seam again. And then I can trim that thread. And then halfway through, again making sure that I haven't got my um, thread caught up. Okay, I'm going to put it on pause, re-thread the machine and I'll be right back with you. Um, I just switched the machine to sew in the centre because it was easier to line up, that's all I was doing. So, welcome back. We are at the last stage. So we have our bag, we have our tags at the bottom and we have our thing at the front. Yeah? Yeah. Alright, threading the string. Now, as I said before, you can either sew the string in, which is easier in a way, but what we need to do is we need the length of the string to go through the, the top so that it's open and enough string to go down to the bottom. Now when the string is on the person it is going to be with the bag closed so we don't need to worry about too much excess because when the bag's closed then we've got the excess so that we can wear it on our shoulders. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to find a method to thread it. Now, one of the ways is, um, this is like, I think they call it a curvy grip. It's like a hair grip and it just gives us something to hold on to whilst we're threading. Or you could use a safety pin. It's just so that when we're pushing it through the holes, we've got something to grip on. And we need to take it through the bottom tag and through one of these. You 
the one. <laughs> I was aiming for the bottom one and we went through the top. And then it's just a matter of pulling it through. You know, careful not to push it right through the fabric. Depending on the fabric you've used, I've gone for quite a soft open loop canvas. And um, yeah. So let's make sure we're not caught up. Managed to catch a piece of cotton there and then because I've gone through the top, I'm going to go through the top again. And then the other one, I'm going to go through the bottom so that we keep it nice and neat. And just pulling it through. I know. And then what we're going to do is we're going to knot it. And then we're going to pull the knot round so it's sort of not showing, um, which is easy enough. There we go. So I'm just taking it off the grip now and either redo the knot, undo the knot, tidy up the knot. I'm going to use a reef knot so it lies as flat as possible, so right over left tuck it under and then over again right over left so be careful not to twist it so that it doesn't slide through okay and then I just pull that through so it's out of the way and then I need to do the same again so good idea to cut your string at the same time so that it's level not essential okay so yes really easy to do great fun little present um, we could make it out of ripstop cotton or something I'm um, obviously I've chosen for more of a pretty one but then that's just me I don't know. Well, nothing exciting is going to happen. I'm just going to do the same again on the other side. So, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for watching. I hope everyone has a great holidays this year. I know some people have already started those. And um, I will continue to do daily videos. I have loads of ideas. I just have very little time, <laughs> as I'm sure everyone does at this time of year. And... Um, Thank you ever so much for your support. We've nearly been going a year. 23rd of January we started. And it was a case of New Year's Eve. We decided, well, we were talking about general stuff. And um, my family said that they always thought I would do a YouTube video of cooking. Because I'm a bit of a mad cook. And um, I said, no, oh, I don't know, sewing. And um, <laughs> yes, so we rooted around. We got cameras and everything, and I had the sewing machines, and away we've going. So over 300 videos later, and a um, couple of disasters, like breaking my hand, uh, <laughs> we're still going strong. So thank you ever so much for your support, and yeah. Um, what I'm having trouble with here is it's catching up on the loose thread. So if you do do this, I would recommend that you cut your, tidy up your loose threads first. It's just one of those things. It's like my least favourite job, so I usually tend to do it last. Um, but um, yes. So that's that bit. And if all else fails, you can always start again, really. So, around we go. And this time I'm using the blunt end of the Kirby grip. And I'm using the sort of waxy stop at the end to hold the knot on. And it's just so that I don't get it caught up. And I just pull that through. One side is a bit tidier than the other, which is always the way with me because of I usually do the one that I'm on filming a little bit tidier. And the others I just rush. There 
there we go. So, down again. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to cut the knot off rather than try and unknot it. Just because I know that I've given myself loads and loads of um, spare fabric. And round we go. And then I'm going to trim off the ends so that they don't bulk up underneath. There we are. So we have a little string bag ready for a little person to put little ballet shoes in. And um, we're all done. So yeah, just remember that you do need at least enough thread so that it lies flat. You don't need to worry too much about the cord being extra long because as you can see when we close the bag it's going to give that excess so that we can put things in and of course we're going to need to put the knots towards the end. Okay, thank you ever so much for watching. My name is Fiona from Weekly Sewing Bee.